to our exclusive webinar on why Portugal and why are UAE residents planning on the long-term game for Portugal Golden Visa 2022. My name is Afsana Rahim Lakhani signing in from Lisboa. I'm the moderator for today's evening. We at the Lakhani Group invest in real estate and our service-focused family office dedicated in embracing values, bringing shared health for the beneficiaries. Before we dive into the webinar, let me do a quick temperature check. We will request you to turn your audio and video off always. Kindly keep your phones on silent mode to get the most out of this webinar. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type in the Zoom chat. We'll have the time for the question towards the end. Let us start with our webinar by welcoming our four amazing speakers. The first panelist is Francisco Castelbranco Prospero, who is a lawyer and a partner for PAC Ore da Cunha in Lisboa, Portugal. He graduated in law by the Faculty of Law of Universidad Catholic Portuguesa, a postgraduate degree by Institute of Economic, Financial, Tax Law of the Faculty of Law of the University of Lisboa. He worked as a lawyer in the law firm, then founded PSTM Advocados. Currently part of Pact Ore da Cunha, he has focused in his professional practice in tax law, corporate law, and foreign investment, and has recently participated as a speaker in several international conferences dedicated to international asset management. Welcome, uh, Mr. Francisco, the forum is all yours. Thank you very much, Asana, for, for the introduction. Let me uh, first thank the, the Lacani group for organizing this, this webinar and, uh, and for inviting me to participate in it. Also thank everyone that is listening and especially to, to Azin Roshan that, and André Pereira Gonçalves that are also panelists here. Uh, well, just to to give you um, to to give you a little bit of information about our law firm. This law firm has has started uh, uh, 15 years ago and uh, has been uh, uh, has entered into a merger with another law law office in in 2015. And now we are around 30 lawyers working in several areas of of business. In my case, especially, I, I work with the foreign investment as a tax advisor and uh, also as assisting foreign investors to, to invest in Portugal also. And we also have a team here that specialized in, in assisting the golden visa applicants doing their investments and, uh, and during the process of, uh, of obtaining the, the, the golden visa. We started, we started working with the Golden Visa um, more or less uh, since 2013. Uh, and, and since then we have, we have submitted uh, hundreds of, of, of applications for a Golden Visa, especially through real estate investments, but also through other types of investments and as fund investments and, and, uh, uh, and through the transfer only of money. Uh, and 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 uh, and others that we will mention uh, forward. Um, Chaim, if you could pass to the first slide. So, are you able to uh, see the okay. screen there, Dr. Francesco? Uh, I'm. I just see a landscape. Um, ah. <laughs> Sorry, my apologies. There it is. Okay, thank you. So this is the the team that is specially dedicated to 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 the golden visa to assisting the golden visa applicants. We have uh, a force that is my partner and works with me with. Uh, with, uh, with assisting foreign investors. Uh, Afonso works uh, more with the structuring collective undertakings and, uh, and uh, my team, uh, my part of the team works with, uh, with the tax advising. We have also here uh, Marli and, and some of the people that assist the, the golden visa applicants. That's Marli is especially, she works 
for more than seven years now, only with the, with the golden visa, and and she has acquired a lot of a lot of experience on it. Uh, my presentation will will or through my presentation, I expect to give you a, a brief on on the procedure to get the the Portuguese golden visa. Uh, uh, and uh, and also to give you an idea of the eligible investments and uh, and the process of obtaining the golden visa uh, and the governmental fees that that are required to pay for the for the golden visa. So, first of all, what is important that that to know is that the golden visa is a residence permit. So it allows uh, the applicant to live in Portugal and stay in Portugal as long as the applicant wishes. And it's, uh, it, it is mainly dependent on one requirement that is making an, an eligible investment. Of course, uh, uh, this, 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 there are other requirements, of course, but this, this is the main one. So this is a residence permit that is given based on a, the, the, the actual investment in Portugal. So, and what, what, is the, what are the benefits that the, the golden visa gives to the applicants? So, um, of course, the, the, the person that, has, that holds a golden visa does need a, a visa to enter in Portugal and he is allowed to leave and to work in Portugal and stay in Portugal for as much as he, as he wishes. But there is a special characteristic of this, this resident permit that the minimum requirement of stay in Portugal is of only seven days per year. Uh, uh, so the applicant uh, or the holder of the, of the residence permit only needs to stay in Portugal for seven years and uh, for seven days per year. So, and, and uh, so the, this person can live in another country, but he holds a residence permit in Portugal. Okay, so what this also gives the applicant or the holder of the, of the residence, this residence permit, a, a visa exemption for traveling within the Schengen area. It allows the applicant to, uh, to, to extend his resident permit to the members of the family, including the, the, the children and, and the parents and also the spouse, of course. Uh, uh, so the only one, in, only one investment, it's enough to give the, the residence permit or this special residence permit to all the members of the family, okay? Um, so, and in the end, at the end of five years of holding this residence permit, the applicant is also allowed to request for Portuguese citizenship. I mentioned five years because the law was, was updated and or, or was changed and, and it has changed from six to five years, but the services are still are still adapting to that change, and there are some 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 need of uh, of uh, updating the procedures to 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 allow the five years to to apply. But anyway, the applicant after the five years of holding the the residence permit, the golden visa, has the right to up, to apply for Portuguese citizenship. And uh, what, what are the, 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 the main, the main, the eligible investments that, that, uh, that, that uh, are for, for the golden visa? So we have, first of all, the transfer of 1.5 million euros. That uh, this is the mere transfer of money. So uh, the only requirement is the transfer of 1.5 million euros to a bank account in Portuguese. You have also the creation of 10 jobs that it's usually done through investment in a company that, that, that then invests, that hires these 10 jobs, the, these 10 people that creating those 10 jobs. We have also the purchase of real estate property with, uh, with above 500,000 euros. Um, and uh, well, we have also this 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 500,000 euros can be reduced to 350 if the real estate is located in uh, urban regeneration areas 
or if the building has more than 30 years. So um, uh, we also have the 500 euros transfers for investing in research activities conducted by public or private scientific research institutions. We also have the 250,000 euros for investing in artistic output or supporting the arts for restriction or refurbishment of national heritage. Uh, we, the, we, you can also, it is also eligible the, the capital transfer of 500,000 for the acquisition of the unit shares of funds in Portugal that are that that low that allocate the the the, the money to invest in in Portuguese companies, um, and you also have the possibility of investing in companies in Portugal uh, uh, and creating of permanent working jobs. But mainly, I would like just to 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 express that the main the main investments that 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 uh, were used by applicants for to apply for the golden visa are real estate investments and investments in participation units of funds. They're, those are the 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 main ones. There are also some uh, investments that only only or some uh, golden visas that were that were accepted by the, the transfer of money into Portugal. But so these three are mainly, and the creation of 10 jobs, but these are the main ones. These are the main, the main, the main ones. Regarding the transfer of 500,000 euros, uh, I must refer to uh, a change in the law that only allows the, or, or that restricts the investment in uh, um, real estate for habitational use in the metropolitan, metropolitan area of Lisbon and Oporto, and also in some coastal areas. So th there is now a limitation uh, on real estate that is destined for habitational use, not for commercial use. This, this is still possible to invest in Lisbon and Oporto. Uh, with a in minimum investment of 500,000 euros. But this is a change that was introduced uh, or that is, that is in force since the 1st of January 2022. Um, so, and to give you an idea of the process uh, for obtaining the golden visa, of course, if you're not in a country that uh, that has a waiver for the the Schengen visa, uh, you have to get the Schengen visa to 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 come to Portugal to Portugal. But this is in a, a specific moment. That is the moment that the applicant comes for the interview. That is the only moment that the applicant really needs to. Uh, have a face-to-face -face interview at CEF here in Portugal. CEF, it's the immigration authority that, that approves the, the, the procedures. So uh, this is, this is not, not the first step. This is not the first step. So I would divide the process in two main steps. One is the investment step, and, and the second one is the, the actual application procedure that starts only after the investment is done. So the first, the first, the first step would start with uh, uh, with uh, alleging the, the the investment that the, that most suits the interests and and uh, and the risk and uh, and and uh, and the the the, um, the personality of the investor that mainly may choose of one of the investments that I've just mentioned. And uh, and uh, and of course the second step in in this in this step the, the the investment must also open a bank account because the there is a requirement that the money enters or comes from a foreign bank account into a Portuguese bank account and then it may be used to uh, to make the investment and in this stage. The, the applicant must also uh, apply for a Portuguese uh, tax number and, and, uh, and, uh, and of course, uh, gather the documentation that is needed to submit the application. Once the, the investment is made uh, and 
completely concluded. For example, if you if you invest in real estate, if the applicant invests in real estate, it would be the, the public deed for, for the purchase or the signing of a promissory sale and purchase agreement that would have a down payment of at least 500,000 euros or 350 if we are talking of uh, refurbishment or, or uh, investment in, in, uh, in uh, uh, rehabilitation areas. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and, and then after that, and once having the bank account, tax number and all the documentation of criminal records and all that uh, uh, gathered, you apply for, you submit the application for, for, the, for the golden visa. Then there is an initial analysis of the authorities um, of the documentation that is submitted. And, and after that analysis, a, a, the, an interview, a face-to-face -face interview is scheduled uh, to deliver all the originals and to and to and to uh, uh, and to make the biometrics and to make the biometrics for the, the issuance of the of the residence permit card. Um, <clears throat> after that, after that, there is a formal approval of the of the of the application, and and afterwards the issuance of the of the residence permit card. So in the end, after all the procedure is done, what the applicant and the investor gets is the residence permit, a residence permit car that may be used to enter in Schengen area, enter in Portugal, and and uh, and will be the the title that that allows him to 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 live in Portugal if if he wants. So this is this is so also at the same time or in a in afterwards after the application for the main investment you the, the, there is the possibility of uh, applying for the family reunification of the spouse and also of the children or uh, the parents if in case but but there is a requirement that need to be dependent economically dependent from the main the main applicant so uh, but it it may be the the procedure may be done simultaneously or just after the first application of the of the of the main applicant after the so the the residence permit is normally issued for one year and uh, and it must have it was the, the investor may must make the first renewal after one year uh, recently uh, it has been approved that that or this this deadline of one year has been extended to two years but I think this is just a, uh, a temporary um, measure that the, 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 the government introduced in order to, uh, to, to, to reduce the effects or in order to face the effects of the, of the pandemic crisis that, that we all faced during, this past, during the past two years. Uh, but we think that it will, it will, it is, it will uh, be done. The first renewal will be needed to to be done in in one year period. So mainly there are two renewals that the applicant has to make in order to 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 have the five years of residence permit to apply for the Portuguese nationality. So just to, I think this is an overview of, of the procedure, of course, we can give you more details if you, if you need, but just to finalize, I would like to give an idea of the costs that are, that in, that are involved uh, uh, in, in this procedure. So the investor, once the application is made, the investor has to pay 533 euros to, for the analysis of for the first analysis of the, the application and in case of family reunification the the this amount may be 84 years or 533 years it depends because uh, in our experience we now we are the the, the, the authority is requesting us or is requesting the the, the family reunification the uh, applicant to pay only 84 years, but there was a period 
uh, where we were asked or the, or the applicant was asked to pay 533 years that was the, the same as the, the main investment but now it is 84 we don't know if there will be any change on this on this and then after the the the, the, the application is formally approved the, the the investment has to make a an additional payment of 5325 euros to the to the to the authorities and in uh, all the renewals in, in the two renewals an, ec, an ec additional payment of 2663 euros it, it must be done for for each renewal this this amount is also applicable to the uh, to the members of the family that apply for for family reunification so i think this is more or less an overview i i cannot extend myself because otherwise i would i would uh, occupy too much time and i know that that the 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 the, the other that the, there will be there, there are some issues that will also be attended in the, in the in the by the other applicants so it is it's uh, i think it's for now it's it's the thank you thank you so much mr francisco for enlightening us about the golden visa process i will request the attendees to post any questions they have on the chat box while they are posting the questions let me ask one question from myself myself so what are your views on the new changes uh, in effective over a month now about the golden visa and how does it impact the investment to golden visa and venture capital fund okay so so the, the to just to 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 point out the changes so the changes were uh, the transfer of of money passed from 1 million euros to 1 million 500 euros the investment in 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 venture capital or in funds passed from 350 to 500 euros, and there were introduced restrictions regarding investment in real estate for habitational purposes in Lisbon and Oporto and coastal areas. So I think this, with this, tends, this, the, with these changes, the, 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 the government wanted to introduce some, some, or to make it a little bit harder to, 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 to apply for, for this residence permit. But I think it's to give some, to, to align the investment in units of a fund with the investment of real estate and also uh, to, 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 I think, to attract more investment. I think it's one, one of the reasons. Uh, I don't, I don't, of course, there was, there was a, a, a run to, the, to, to apply for, for, for the golden visa in the end of last year, because of course the, 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 there is there is there is there are some limitations. This tends this the 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 the, 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 applica the application it's it's a little bit difficult, but there isn't in fact any change to to so I, I don't think that there will be considerable changes. Just this one, of course, it's a little bit more difficult. You need the investment needs to to invest more money to to make this investment. So other than that. I think that that there are no 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 considerable changes. All right, amazing. Thank you so much. As you can see, there are a few more questions on the chat box. Maybe while the other panelists are presenting, you can respond on the chat box to Sahil. Uh, thank you, Sahil, for asking questions. So now we are uh, moving on to our another panelist and. Uh, now, let me share a few words about him. Our second panelist is Andre Pereira Gonzalez, a, uh, a part of business development manager at Passport Legacy in Dubai, UAE. He has worked at several law firms as legal advisor, wherein he provided legal assistance to foreign clients and investors in Portugal, namely in banters related to real estate and corporate investments, legal assistance in immigration and consenting in contracts and notary acts. Welcome to our webinar, Andre. We are pleased to have you. Thank you so much, Mr. Francisco. Now, thank you very much for the for the introduction, Afsana. Pleasure to to see you again, Rahim. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Francisco. As uh, Afsana said, I was before joining Passport Legacy here in Dubai last year. I was a lawyer in Portugal for for almost seven years. I was um, working in a law firm 
were doing the, the Golden Visa and real estate investments uh, from 2015. I spent a brief period of time in a real estate developer as well. So I've been on both sides of the of the equation, both the, the retail and both the, the salesman. Um, just a brief word about Passport Legacy. We, we are a Swiss company, we are headquartered in Dubai and we specialize in uh, second citizenship and residency by investment. Uh, so what do we do? We offer all the, let's, let's say the usual suspects in terms of uh, in citizenship by investment, the Caribbean programs, uh, the newcomers as well, such as Turkey, and the residency programs by investment in Europe, uh, Portugal and Greece most prominently. What, um, and, uh, and we are trying to boost with my presence here our offer in terms of Portuguese Golden Visa. Uh, the Portuguese Golden Visa itself is a unique proposition in terms of, of citizenship by, and residency by investment. But for, for for two reasons, um, it allow it allows you a lot of flexibility in the choice of the investment, which is highly competitive. Whereas the the let's say the normal programs such as uh, the ones that Raim is showing us here, uh, Antigua, Dominica, and so on and so forth, offer you the possibility of investing in a real estate, but it has to be. Uh, a government approved real estate. Some of the other programs go, go along this line that they allow the investor to choose ultimately what is the subject of the investment. If it's real estate, they can choose the real estate that they would like to pursue and so on and so forth, such as in Turkey and in Greece. The other thing that sets Portugal apart is that while it is first and foremost a residency program, it leads, it can lead to citizenship. And this is the biggest ticket for, uh, for and our, our biggest sell point to people looking into, into second seats, into, into these programs. Because with a very, with a significant inv financial investment, but little personal involvement in the sense that it doesn't demand the person to relocate to Portugal or to, or to spend several long times of, of period of time in Portugal, ultimately it can lead to citizenship the, according to the to the current uh, regulations. So this is these two things combined make it a unique proposition. Whereas in terms of the Greek program, where it, it doesn't demand uh, for the for residency purposes only, it doesn't demand that the um, that the, that the applicant stays for in Greece for any minimum period of time, it can only lead to citizenship by naturalization if the resident, if the resident chooses to spend, to live seven years full-time in Greece. Uh, the biggest pro, the program that comes the closest to Portugal is uh, in terms of leading to, to European citizenship with as minimum involvement is Malta. But, uh, for those who know and those who are in the industry, uh, everyone is aware that Malta is composed by a big chunk of, uh, of donation to the government, of money that you cannot back. Whereas in Portugal, uh, the investment is yours at the end of the day. So the flexibility, the flexibility with the flexibility in terms of investment, plus the minimum stay requirements and, and the possibility of acquiring European Union citizenship are the big are the, the things that get people to the top. What are the what do I think that are that I won't go into very fine detail on the Portuguese program because Francisco here did a very nice job of outlining all the nooks and crannies and the amounts and all the processes and I don't think that people would would need a refresher on that. What I think that there are the challenges here for for this year. Um, is that this this flexibility that sets the program apart was was a bit removed with the with the recent changes. This this is the I think this this is the biggest challenge for all the service providers that that orbited the golden visa universe. How to adapt to this? Because the program lives and dies by the by the investment. And what and what can an investor do? And if 
until 31st December 2021, the answer was they, an investor can do almost anything. Now we have to be more careful with how we advise our clients and prospects and, and friends in the industry how to proceed. So when, when a client comes to us uh, and asks us what can we do, the challenge now, and uh, I think this is the, the, the easy answer would be venture capital funds, I would say, because it is very easy to, for, for an advisor, even from, uh, for a lawyer to, to advise in this, in this field. The, the funds are easily verifiable if they are, if they are eligible or not. It's a matter of doing three or four phone calls, checking the, the, the Portuguese equivalent of this uh, securities and exchange website. And, uh, and basically our verification is done. Then it's a matter of finding a fund that adjusts to the preferences of the clients. Uh, the challenges for the clients at, at the end of the day are more value driven or still one property, even with all the restrictions and finding the credible offers and the credible developers and the reputed people that are in business that can advise in that front. And this is this is where the I, I would say this is where the real challenge begins. This combined with the fact that the funds went up from 350 to 500, it will push more people that are more uh, more uh, value driven or that have more tight budgets to to still look into properties. And it will be our job to to find them the the suitable options that that uh, that correspond to the client standards and uh, in this at least in this part of the world the standards are quite high in terms of both offer in terms of return of on investment so on and so forth so i would say that these are the this is what we will be facing in 2022 um we will see i don't i don't anticipate and People who are, in, who are in Portugal might might be of different opinion that the, the the legislation concerning citizenship and the citizenship by naturalization will change in the future. Um, so so I wouldn't say that this is a source of concern. And I think after these major changes in the in the program, um, I wouldn't say that there are man, many more changes coming in the horizon, but we'll have to see, especially in light of the recent reports by the European Union and the presses for changing these type of programs. Um, I would be looking forward to here. I saw uh, a question here in the in the in the comment chat about the the, the how long does does it take, and this would be something that I would be. That I would be interested from hearing from someone that that is on the ground, such as Francisco. How how is it going currently with the appointments and uh, and the, the rest traveling restrictions, if there are still any? Uh, how is this how is this all being uh, being handled by the by the services, along with the change in the in the designation of the immigration office, changes in procedure and whatnot? What we anticipate and what we can we advise in terms of timelines? This, this is something that I'm genuinely interested to hear as well. Um, Thank you to so conclude, much. To conclude, I just, I, I started with the other programs because from my experience, the clients, when they start considering this, they don't look to, to Portugal alone. They, they look into the, the bigger picture of things. Besides, um, Regardless, as I am Portuguese and highly suspicious for saying this, I still think that Portugal is the, the, one of the best programs and that, that it's uh, the top choice when it comes to residency by investment. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Aldre, for highlighting uh, different kinds of programs for various nationalities. We have a question I think uh, you may be able to answer to Prudence asking mm -hmm. about uh, how does uh, this kind of investment program benefit the UAE residents as well as people who are Canadian citizens? So if you can discuss some benefits of golden visa for UAE residents and citizens of Canada. Uh, I think that what we, what we have seen and what we have seen, especially during the pandemic with the traveling restrictions is that having visa-free access doesn't mean having access in every case and situation. Uh, the main difference here is that people that have visa-free access, such as U.S. citizens, Canadian citizens, 
UAE citizens, they can, they can travel to Europe in normal conditions visa-free, but the borders were closed uh, to, to non-residents, meaning that having a residency in Europe can prove useful when these restrictions are in place. And after we have, what we have seen from the past two years, that I would say that anything is possible at this time, that the, the unthinkable became, became uh, everyday reality. So I would say that uh, that this this is something that that should be considered. Besides, I would say that still the investment opportunities are are good. You can it it is uh, for these citizens if they wish to have a, a base in Europe. I think Portugal is a good choice, are good investment opportunities, and uh, if chosen well, the residency can be almost a, a bonus. Let's say something that. Um, something to look forward to even though the, not the first necessity because not for the ease of traveling and it's something that you can keep for a small holiday in portugal seven days every year uh you might want to stay more the, the food is amazing the weather is amazing people are amazing so i, I wouldn't i wouldn't say that that's completely out of and what do you know after five or six years you might you might like the country you might like the people who might want to apply for a, for a second or a third passport, if possible, for you in the case of Canadian and US citizens, and enjoy the, the benefits of the country, I would say. But in a nutshell, I think this is it. Um, I could, I, I think if we show the uh, YouTube video of all Portugal with landscapes and whatnot, this would be enough. I wouldn't ever need to say anything. Yes, I have made that choice and I don't regret it for sure. <laughs> And uh, yes, uh, last question to you uh, from the people who have some assumptions about the Portuguese Golden Visa program, which is being said to have blacklisted by OECD as uh, is that the case? And if you can share some uh, views on that, please. So there are certain, certain countries that due to lack of, of compliance with the um, uh, with the tax treaties of the EU, with especially with third countries, that they were blacklisted most prominently uh, Dominica and Vanuatu. So what does this mean? This means there are certain sanctions in place, mostly of financial nature, to, to try to, to bring these countries back into the fold, to make them co-adherent to the to these to this, uh, tax standards and to make everything more transparent. Uh, this is what it means being blacklisted. The, the, I think the words for, for the practical effects of what it provokes is, is very strong because these countries still have the, the visa-free access and whatnot. What these nationals suffer is from uh, sanctions that are most of them financial or, and or economical, such as some trouble to opening bank accounts and so on and so forth. Uh, even though uh, Portugal is not is not one of these countries, um, and in the recent uh, study, I, I again refer to it by the European Union, the recent report on the on the CBI and RBI programs, Portugal is not one of that raises um, concern about the, the strictness of due diligence procedures and, and so on and so forth. So it's a program that is well reputed and that doesn't face this kind of issue. After all, the, this is a European Union country and the sanctions would come into, into the European Union level. So, so yes, so that, that, would be, that, that would be my answer. And it's, uh, just to make a clear, uh, just a bit to add more contrast and more color, with the Portuguese program has not been subject to the kind of attention by the European Commission is, for, for instance, Cyprus and Malta. And uh, for industry insiders, they know what I'm talking about. So there's, there's quite a bit of difference there as well. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, Mr. Andre. And now My let's uh, move our gaze towards another dynamic personality in the room, Mr. Azeen Roshan, who is the founder of Black Concrete in Lisboa and Roshan Group in Dubai. He is ethnically Iranian, but uh, born and raised in Dubai. Azin Roshan moved to Lisboa in uh, 2018 with almost a decade of experience in Dubai and Northern Cyprus in the fields of banking, real estate, sales, interior design, fit outs, and construction. He has successfully created a motivational 
uh, environment and built a team of honest, hardworking international professions. We are proud to have Mr. Azeem to our webinar. Over to you. First of all, thank you so much for that lovely introduction, Axon. It's a great pleasure to be here. I would like to say hello to everybody, um, especially to our panelists. I'd like to start by saying, since I was born and raised in Dubai, I used to travel quite a lot. It's, it's quite regular for us in the Middle East to run away from the heat, to enjoy different countries and see different cultures. I personally did try to move to several different countries in, within Europe to actually live, because by the end of the day, being born in Dubai doesn't make you a UAE citizen, unfortunately. Um, my experience as to when I got to Portugal was, was, uh, was, 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 was quite life-changing. The people here, the weather here, um, the lifestyle here, everything is so, so attractive. Everything is so calm. The nature here is absolutely amazing. Um, it just makes you feel like home. It's super safe. Everybody speaks English. Um, I mean, the amount of plus points that I've found here is, is a lot. I can probably talk till tomorrow morning, but I'm sure I don't have that much time. Um, my personal experience uh, in terms of golden visa, since I've been dealing with mainly Iranians and the Middle East, is them um, investing in actually um, tangible um, investments such as properties. And, um, and uh, you know, we, we, we have a pretty, you yourself have an absolutely amazing uh, golden visa property development into the fourth of value, which I, it, it is my absolute favorite. It offers a lot. And um, yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Azeen, for your presentation. And uh, it's time uh, to open the forum for some questions. So in brief, uh, I would like to ask you questions before the, the audience get that opportunity. So can you uh, share uh, something about like how the real estate developer uh, works like in Portugal? What are the opportunities that you foresee in this industry? Well, basically, you know, since I've moved here, the, the economy here has been growing. It's, been, it's becoming a pretty, pretty interesting international hub, whereas you get a lot of international people moving here. A lot of people from all around the world come in here as well. Um, my experience has been beautiful. I see the property market growing day by day. Demand is increasing every day. Um, it's just, it's just, it just has been um, a wonderful experience, and I'm, I'm very, very happy that I'm here and I'm planning to stay as well. <laughs> amazing, amazing! Thank you so much. And uh, can the Golden Visa program do you think is applicable to have a remotely, or like you know, does the person has to come in person to do it? As far as your experience is considered. Well, I believe uh, Mr. Francisco here could answer better. However, I believe if you give power of attorney to, to, to a registered lawyer, uh, they would be able to do um, everything on your behalf except the biometrics, of course. Are they? Are yes, they? It's, 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 it's true. So uh, everything can be done remotely with no need with a power of attorney or sometimes we, we've faced investors that are not very keen to, to, to sign powers of attorney. And even in those cases, we managed to, to, to do it remotely, of course, for the exception of the face-to-face the, the -face -to -face interview with the authorities. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Francisco, for highlighting that point. Thank you for coming in. And also lastly, as compared to Dubai, uh, how are property prices and rentability in Lisbon, if you are aware, Mr. Azim? Well, basically compared to Dubai, I do have a little, um, I'm, I'm a little traumatized about Dubai, unfortunately. Um, you know, people were, 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 were purchasing things that were unfortunately not always being delivered. However, some were, or they were being basically purchasing things that were being delivered a little differently. 
Um, this I'd, I'd, I'd like to bring my attention, everybody's attention to to um, to, 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 to to your project, which is uh, Quinta de Forte Value. It's an absolutely amazing project. Having the construction background, I've seen about 80% of the project being completed up to an amazing standard, to be quite frank. The finishes that you've been using is, is quite beautiful. I mean, the fact that you can actually buy a serviced, um, a serviced villa in that price in Europe with all those facilities and amenities like it, you know, tennis court, restaurant, pharmacy, swimming pool, so on and so forth. And I believe this is just the phase one. Um, it is it is a very, very, very reasonable price. Amazing. So uh, as you recommend this project, especially in Lisbon, thank you so much for highlighting the uh, the services about the Quinta do Porto Velo. Now, let me uh, thank you so much, Mr. Azim. And let me thank move uh, on. Can I? Can I just point out one more thing as well? Sure, the sure. payment plan that you're offering is insane. I mean, the fact that you just have to pay 25% now and the rest on delivery on a project that is about 80, 80% done, it is, it is, wow, good job to you guys. Well done. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Thank Ms. You. Kelvin. And uh, yes, finally moving on to our next and final panelist, Rahim Lakhani, to discuss more about the newly launched 7X Fund, the team's track record and its investment strategy. So Mr. Rahim Lakhani is uh, proud to present 25 million euro venture capital fund named as 7X Portugal Fund, which is a golden visa immigration and investment solution managed by the Lakhani Group Capital SER. He's the president and CEO of the Lakhani Group and also a seasoned real estate investor that owns and operates a multi-million dollar portfolio of properties in Portugal, Canada, USA, and India. He also uh, has a graduate degree in engineering from University of Waterloo from Canada and a postgraduate degree in real estate financing, taxation, and investment from Institute of Lisboa University. He has worked extensively in European, American, Canadian, and Southeast uh, Asian markets. He currently invests in market of de-stressed assets and restructuring of companies in advanced uh, operational stages. Now, without further ado, we'll turn the time over to uh, Mr. Rahim Lakhani. Thank you so much, Afsana, for uh, the kind introduction. Um, I think we have the experts here. So uh, the audience is pretty much now waiting with the bag of money and uh, asking where, where do they go? How do they go? And I think this is this next segment is really the answer. Uh, and uh, we will go through that. But before I dive into that, uh, one of the most important things that uh, several of uh, our panelists uh, actually uh, alluded to is the, the, the team itself. So I'd like to introduce uh, our team, uh, the, the, the management team here uh, at the Lakhani Group. And so it's myself. Uh, uh, as the president and CEO of uh, the operations, um, Afsana here, who is uh, moderating as the, the vice president of sales, Zima as the, uh, the VP on compliance, and Karim, my brother-in-law, who is uh, uh, the VP on accounts. So uh, this is a family company uh, and uh, uh, bounded by uh, uh, you know great rules, uh, great family-rooted values, uh, an amazing uh, journey that we have actually uh, come uh, from literally from all over the continent, all over the all over the globe, I should say. So, uh, I'm a Canadian. Uh, Afsana here is uh, coming from Mumbai, India. Uh, Karim and Azima have been uh, in in the Americas for the very long, uh, very long time. So, we are truly bringing an international experience uh, to the investors, and also uh, uh, being dealing with several international investors. So we definitely know the mindset of people uh, and with the help of uh, the panelists here i think we're going to shake up uh, uh, in, a, in a much better way and and service our clients in uh, a very sophisticated but simplistic way as well so uh, not to forget uh, on the 7x investment fund uh, what makes us even prouder is our supervisory board uh, which has a uh, combined over 100 years of experience i, sh I should say which uh, from the backgrounds of legal, from the backgrounds of accounting, from auditing. So we are truly proud to not only have uh, ourselves give to the fund, but also have uh, these gentlemen who provides and uh, essentially uh, helps the investor and keeps the 
keeps the management board in check. So this is uh, the first safety net that you have uh, when you make that investment into 7X for your golden visa. Further to that, uh, we are also uh, very, very happy to introduce you to uh, three of our uh, investment advisory board, uh, which again stands as uh, the backbone of the 7X fund. Uh, one, of, uh, one of them is actually from Dubai, uh, one from London, and uh, Abney, who is uh, actually a local real estate developer here. So uh, supervisory board check, uh, management board check, and we also have a very strong investor advisory board, uh, again, probably another 100 years of experience here in the business uh, who has been advising and protecting the investors' interests. So uh, we're truly fortunate and truly that makes up for that uh, extremely strong uh, team that uh, is there to guide and navigate the 25 million euro venture capital fund. Uh, the four uh, pictures that you see are central locations in, in, uh, in and around Lisboa. Uh, this uh, shows our uh, personal investments uh, in Saldania, in uh, Markish Pambal, in Marti Monish, and uh, a student housing building in Oarash, which is close to one of the largest universities uh, in, uh, in uh, Portugal called Nova SBE. So this kind of highlights the fact that, uh, you know, that although the fund may be uh, the first fund that we have launched, we have uh, already a significant amount of expertise in uh, owning and uh, managing uh, both for short term and long term uh, place and uh, so so this kind of uh, uh, pictures are there to impress upon you totally available for a detailed report on uh, on any of our assets for you to get comfortable on the style of management that we have and uh, how we actually maximize and produce uh, great returns for our uh, for our investors as well so many people have asked, uh, what is 7X? Uh, and uh, can you allude to what, what it means? So seven, the number seven really for us uh, means that we are going to be uh, here to work for our investors seven days a week. So when, when your money is into the fund, rest assured you, uh, you should know that that money is being put to a, a great investment. That arrow uh, represents that growth, that represents that direction in which we are always keeping and moving forward with the best in mind and best in innovations. And the X simply stands for the professionalism that we have in our company, uh, in the leadership, uh, in the management, and, uh, and also in the innovation and adaptation. So uh, simply, uh, you know, this is, this is what we stand for and this is what our uh, goal and uh, motto is for the company. Now, there are several funds out there uh, that uh, one can choose from. And of course, everyone, every fund has its own unique uh, uh, USP. However, uh, several of you will ask, why should they invest with 7X? Why not some other fund? And so very simply, here are the reasons why. And one of the largest, one of the biggest reasons uh, that uh, you should definitely uh, go for 7X is that uh, we do not have any complex uh, performance-based uh, structures. Uh, several of the funds we have uh, evaluated do have a bit of a complex structure in terms of how, uh, the, how the management is being compensated, how the uh, Class B shares are being compensated. So we take great pride in having a very simplistic uh, uh, way of uh, making our investments. So um, this is uh, basically the reason for uh, investing in 7X. The second thing that uh, also uh, I highlight is the transparency that we bring to the investors. And the transparency essentially comes with uh, uh, being uh, invited to the annual general meeting, uh, coming with our doors uh, open always at our office in Laranjairash, uh, having the reports shared on a very frequent basis, uh, access to reports through a login ID and password, uh, uh, and, and basically complete updates available on social media, but also on private meetings that uh, we can have one on one with the investors. Uh, one of the things that we take great pride in, especially with working with uh, Dr. Francisco here, is uh, the fast uh, document processing that we have been now able to do uh, with, uh, with the simplification of processes. So when you are going for a golden visa, we really have a very simplistic uh, way of uh, uh, making sure that your application to CEF uh, reaches in a very, very reasonable time frame. So and these are some of the reasons why I think you should definitely go for 7X. 
Uh, this uh, is essentially just a link to uh, for you to go and see where uh, where we are on the CMVM website, which is the Portuguese Securities Commission. So you know that uh, we are an authorized uh, entity. I'll also very simply mention that the fund uh, is a not a real estate fund. It is a venture capital fund, which means it can have relationships and investments in several different ways. Uh, it can own. 100% of a company, it can be a majority stakeholder, it can be a minority stakeholder, or it could purely just have a joint venture partnership uh, for a uh, for profitability or a yield or uh, based on a loan perspective. So there could be many different ways where 7x could actually enter uh, into an agreement with the developer uh, and uh, or an operator of a particular asset. Now, uh, let's go on to where we will be investing uh, the 25 million euro venture capital fund. And these are some of the assets. So the first asset being Quinto de Forto Value, which is a uh, 36 villa unit uh, uh, serviced villa complex uh, about 10 minutes from Lisbon Airport, 10, 12 minutes from the airport. It is uh, a project that is 80 percent complete at the current moment, like Azim mentioned. And uh, it is now uh, scheduled for completion within the, within the end of this year. And uh, the villas will basically be uh, you know, fully, fully furnished uh, and operated for a very strong rentability. So um, all, if you want to invest in the fund, you can do it through the fund. If you want a direct villa in your own name, you can do that as well. So these are two opportunities that we present to you so that you can actually um, really benefit of uh, any any which way that you want. Both uh, investments, of course, at a, are at a minimum of 500,000 euros. Okay. This is another asset that the fund will be investing in and it's currently off market and it's being under negotiation, which is a stable asset, stable operational asset and uh, of a four star luxury resort. So uh, what we are trying to allude to here is uh, your investments will not just go into projects like construction, but also stable projects that uh, will have uh, a potential for, um, for uh, increasing of revenue rather than you know, um, have no revenue in the first stages if it, is more, if it was under construction. Another asset that I'd like to showcase to you, is, uh, uh, which is a Algarve area luxury hotel. Uh, we are also, also another off-market property that we are currently uh, negotiating. This particular property, we are very much interested. So because of the fact that uh, once we uh, divide it up into individual rooms, it will also be eligible for the 280,000 golden visa. So this is also uh, a future investment that uh, we, are, we are considering. And finally, because of our expertise in the student housing market, we are looking at a ground up brand new construction of a professionally managed student housing building uh, very close to our existing building near Nova, which uh, uh, basically, uh, if you had looked at the recent JLL report, uh, you will notice that there is a huge uh, demand for professionally run student housing and, uh, and, a, and a very strong profitability that is scheduled uh, because of the gap that we have in the market. Finally, like I mentioned, no complex structure. Here is our performance fee explained. So if you look on the left-hand side, uh, on the liquidation year, uh, which is currently scheduled to be the seventh year, the original investment will be dispersed, and then the remaining profit, uh, let's call it X, which is then divided up into the 30 plus Y, what we are trying to say is that the investor will, over the seven-year period, have a 30% uh, compound return first before any money floats uh, to the perform to the asset managers, and then only anything that is uh, remaining is a split between 70 and 30, uh, of course, in the favor of the investor. So, what we are trying to um, discuss here is that we always keep the investor's interest in mind. If we do not perform, we do not get paid. Very simple, very simple logic on that. And then uh, finally, uh, just as a summary, this is a minimum seven year term. It could be extended to uh, 10 years if in the seventh year we have cases like COVID or uh, down market, but this is completely uh, in, uh, uh, we will have like an annual general meeting and we will present this to the to the investors and decide upon that. But the minimum is always seven. 
Our target rate uh, for the fund on an annualized basis is 7% as well. And the management fee is 1% of AUM, uh, always paid monthly. So we are an authorized uh, venture capital fund of uh, a target of 25 mil, which will close at the end of uh, this year, uh, at the end of July 2023, uh, which is next year, July, or if it reaches 25 mil, uh, prior to that, which uh, exactly is probably what will happen because of the number of investors that are currently being scheduled and are in the pipeline. And then finally, uh, just to finish off, uh, the exit of the fund is the matched exactly with the exit of your European uh, citizenship and passport. So the whole idea is uh, on exit, you will have uh, you will have uh, the funds and the profitability. So. Um, that's it from uh, from me, and uh, back to you, Sam. All right, thank you so much, Rahim, for highlighting uh, about your fund. A uh, few questions that uh, we have from the attendees, as well as I want to ask you questions about what do you think the initial investors are looking for while they are investing in the venture capital fund? How do they navigate uh, their options? What would you suggest? Absolutely. And it's a very important question. I think the simple answer is the team, uh, the experience and the credibility of the team. So when you research uh, any other fund, uh, this is what you should be looking for is because essentially the, the, the real estate might be owned in your name. However, the fund units are not uh, uh, fund units are in your name, but the fund itself uh, and the management team has uh, the final say on where the investments will go. So uh, when you interview the management team, these are the questions that you need to ask is their credibility and the market. We are also completely open to having uh, scheduled an interview with uh, one of our or two of our investors. So you can also learn from their journey into investing with us. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Rahim, for answering that question. Uh, also, is there an exit strategy if an investor would want to uh, leave the investment fund if the person no longer wants the golden visa? So is there an exit plan? Absolutely. So as you can see on the screen, uh, this is a seven-year fund. Uh, now, let's say there might be issues uh, for a personal on a personal side with the investor and they would want to exit uh, you know, prior to. Uh, most funds do not retain liquidity uh, in terms of because it is deployed in hard assets and real estate assets. Uh, and, uh, and they would probably not allow you to exit prior prematurely because they have, that is a huge uh, downturn. However, because we are a real estate developer ourselves, uh, as well as an asset manager, we do uh, hold a good liquidity share. Uh, for purchasing either ourselves, uh, if, uh, if uh, required, or have uh, investors lined up for the purchase of units. Of course, one must understand that if uh, they exit prematurely, uh, then their golden visa might be at stake. Uh, so this is something that uh, they, should, uh, they should know. Uh, but uh, we are here to openly discuss if those situations do arise. And we're not uh, going to shut things down, uh, especially when there is, uh, uh, there is personal issues uh, that might be involved. All right. Thank you so much. And one last question that we have here is, uh, uh, can an investor invest in multiple funds at the same time? Absolutely. So uh, we have uh, uh, the limit of 500,000, as you know, uh, you can split it up uh, in two funds, let's say 250 and 250 each. Uh, so to, uh, so as to diversify it even further, you can totally do that. Uh, I highly recommend not to split it up into five, uh, even though our minimum is a hundred thousand, essentially because it is a much complicated process. And uh, uh, I think it just creates a huge workload for uh, for uh, Francisco's team, so I don't think they would appreciate it as much. But uh, but it is complicated when it comes to immigration, also. So I think two is probably a very reasonable answer. What do you, what would you say, Dr. Francisco? I would just say that yes, yes, I confirm that that it is possible. And uh, and uh, the only thing is, uh, it gives us a little bit more work. It is a little bit more documents to to to, to gather, uh, but uh, but uh, but it's completely possible, of course. 
Perfect. Right. I think while Mr. Francisco is on the screen, we have another question uh, associated to law. So I can ask you that. So what are the red flags when I'm choosing the lawyer firms offering golden visa services? Sorry, Asana, can you repeat that? Yes, yes. So the question is, what are the red flags when I'm choosing the law firms to, uh, that offers golden visa services? Mm. Well, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I cannot give you a red flag. I just, I just think that 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 the um, the, fa the safest way to choose a, a a law firm or legal assistance to to the golden visa procedure is to try and and look for a law firm or someone that has already experience on submitting the the. The applications, um, but to give you a red flag, I, I I don't know. I cannot point one out. All right, all right. Thank you so much, Mr. Francisco, and uh, thank you so much, uh, panelists and the attendees. So we have a poll on your screen. If you can see here, if you have any other question, you can have a consultation with us, and please. Uh, uh, WhatsApp to us, or we have, uh, we will share our email IDs. Maybe Rangin can project it on the screen for everyone to see our email ID and phone number for any further uh, questions that we can have. Uh, we can see that there is a poll, and even I hope the panelists can also view the poll and please vote uh, as for the questions that we have here so that we can share results with you. So let's take five minutes to answer to the polls. Amazing. Thank you so much. I hope it was an insightful and educational webinar for everyone. Thank you, panelists and the attendees. Bye, ciao.